first of all, we love coming here on, you know, Wednesday nights. You know, Sunday mornings are a little different than Wednesday nights. Um, you know, it's just the way that God's kind of just orchestrated uh, what we see is, is those that, that really desire to hear the voice of God, that are, that, that, that want to, that ready, that are ready to step out. You know, they'll show up, they'll show up on a Wednesday night like tonight, and, and we do what Wednesday Activate, very intense, not intense, but very practical just to help, help people step in and know how to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. And so that's what it's about. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, um, Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. He doesn't, that God doesn't want us to be ignorant of these things, okay? And, and so he begins to describe what those are, the words of, uh, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, prophecy, tongues, interpretation, a gift of faith, healings, miracles, all kinds of things, discerning of spirits. All of these things are available. And here's, it's not available just to, uh, just to special ministers, and we don't go around saying, hey, what's your gift and what's your gift and what's your gift of the nine? Actually, all of them are available because every one of us can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he's the one that distributes in whatever is needed for a given moment. Okay? And so, and so really then, it actually isn't about, okay, well, learning how to flow in the word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, or, you know, that, that, that's the second piece. The first piece is how do I hear from God? Because if you don't know how to hear from God, if you don't know that God's telling you or God's instructing you or God's giving you, for instance, if you don't know how to hear the voice of God for yourself, then when you get a word of knowledge, how do you know it's God? If you get a word of wisdom, how do you know it's God? How many of you, I'm going to get a show of hands, how many of you on a Wednesday night, we've been doing this. Now, we've done this for years, and, and so, but, but starting back about March or April of this year, um, we've just been continuing on, right? How many of you, during some of our Activate moments, have sat there and had thoughts, had Scripture, had pictures or whatever, and you've wondered, is that me or is that God? Show of hands, please. Show of hands. Who's, who's going to be on? Yes, okay. And now, Another show of hands. How many of you have said, God, if that's you, have Pastor Mark call on me? I, I want to see that. Okay. <laughs> Even while Pastor Mark is saying, if you have something, come on up, right? <laughs> so what does that just show? It just shows that we're growing and we're learning, right, in, in these things. And, and so here at this church, we have this safe environment that we can, man, we can, we can encourage one another. We can step out, and, and it's awesome. So you have to know that it's God before you'll step out and say, man, I have a word of wisdom. I have a word of knowledge, that kind of thing. So I want to talk to you a little bit tonight. Um, last week, we had an awesome, awesome week. We talked about, um, uh, you know, as I talked about ways or his ways are higher than our ways. But then we talked about how God speaks to us through Scripture, right? And so what we did in that Activate portion is we said, if God gives you a Scripture right away, just come up, read the Scripture, and, and sit down. Let's listen to the voice that comes through Scripture, the voice that comes through the Word of God, okay? But tonight I want to talk to you about another piece. Where did John, where, where did John go? Just so, so, John, I'm just giving you... Um, warning, that's why I wanted you to be in here, that there will be a piece in this tonight um, in the activate portion that the Lord's going to use you in. Okay? So, heads up. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to watch John try to learn to hear the voice of God tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we just have fun. We just have fun. It's, uh, it's awesome. But I want to talk to you another way that God speaks to you, and this is, this is so important, okay? So um, the clue to it happened at the end of the service last week. So last week, um, we, we watched as, as, as Lauren, she came up, and she shared uh, the picture that God had given to her about a windmill, you know, and, and, and not a windmill like an old-time windmill, but these windmills now that we see across the landscape, particularly if you drive through Kansas. Like, Kansas is not a fun drive if you drive through that, except you just see windmills everywhere. And so what God had showed Lauren is that these windmills, that the higher that you go, and this is the reason they're so tall, the, the greater the wind, 
okay, which is going to produce in the windmills more power, more energy, that kind of thing, and that they even adjust with the flow of wind. And, and we begin just to get that understanding with regard to how the Spirit of God works. Spirit of God, there's a flow there. And, and what we want to do is we always want to adjust. We always, always want to trim ourselves, if you will. We always want to be aware of what the, the ebbs and the flows of the Holy Spirit are saying in a given moment. It's the greatest place to be to. Listen to this. It's the greatest place to be to that, that you're not just hearing God right here. You're not just hearing God on a Wednesday night amongst a family of believers. You know, we love that, and that's awesome, but the whole point for what we do here is so that you are constantly in a place tomorrow, on Thursday, as you go to work, as you're at work, as you're talking to people, that you are also listening and hearing what God is saying in that given moment. You can actually talk to people and listen to what they say and be hearing from the Spirit of God at the same time. And it's something that you grow in. It's something that you grow in. And so that's the greatest place to be, so that life becomes effortless because now you're just flowing with everything that the Spirit of God wants you to do. And it just becomes fun, 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 all right? And so as we did that, so what Lauren said is that, um, but she said, but, you know, the wind of the Spirit, I'm just paraphrasing, it's not power that it produces. That's not the goal. It's something else, something else, you know. And then what, what God just wonderfully did, as he does so often, you know, through, through these Wednesday Activates, is Toby came up and shared something that God had given to him during worship that fit right in line with everything that was shared, and then... Um, he began to talk about, if I remember correctly, he began to talk about, it's about peace. It's about rest. It's about coming into that place, right? And then, and then Lauren's like, yep, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's about, it's about staying in that place of peace. And that's what I want to talk to you about for a few minutes tonight, about the peace of God. The peace of God. So in, in Colossians chapter 3, Let's look at verse 12, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. The, I, I love this. The, the heading here in the New King James Version says it's the character of the new man. This is who we are. It says, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness. Now, um, uh, I don't have time to, to illustrate this completely, but many times Paul uses this phrase to put on, put on. And really what he's talking about, if you look at Ephesians chapter 4, what he does is he, he talks about taking off the old man and putting on the new in the way that you think and the way that you act, okay? It's, 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 it's like taking off the old ratty clothes and putting on the brand new clothes, and, and so there's ways that you do that. And so this is what he's talking about. Put on, you're putting on these, th this, this character in the way that you live, in the way that you think, in the way that you react, in the way that you speak, in the way that you act. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, okay? These are like you're accessorizing, okay? <laughs> you get that? Bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. All right? So in the same manner, at the same level, at the same measure as Christ forgave us, we must do as well. But above all these things, so all those things are great, but above all of those, put on love. Put on love. That needs to be the main thing. Put on love, which is the bond of perfection. It's the thing that creates the bond between brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's why Jesus said, the new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Now, that wasn't the new part. The new part was, as I have loved you. In the same manner, that however, at whatever level that you think that Christ loves you, and whatever that looks like to you, 
then that's what should be reflected in your life to your church family, to brothers and sisters loving each other. But then look at this next phrase. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the peace of God. Now, the peace of God can't rule in your heart. And that word, and that word rule, actually literally like in the Amplified, it would even say it this way, but it means to rule in your heart as an umpire. As an umpire. So if you, if you watch baseball, an umpire, an umpire um, says, you know, if it's a ball, if it's a strike, or call somebody out, right? Or safe, you know. And so the peace of God, if we're led by the peace of God, the peace of God will determine if we're about to make a wrong decision, a right decision, if it's the right direction. It's one of the ways that God speaks to us. And so sometimes you'll hear people say, well, I just don't have a peace about that. Okay. What are, you, what are you saying? I don't have a piece about that. I'm, you're saying that something doesn't sit right. And so what happens, like, have you ever, have you, just to show you how this works, have you ever done something and it didn't work out your way, and then you said, something told me I shouldn't have done that? You knew that that probably wasn't going to be the right. Something was in there. That's the peace of God. That's the voice of God that's talking to you. It's not God saying, don't do that. It's not words coming to you. It becomes this knowing, okay? But Jesus came, first of all, so that we might have peace. The Bible says that the kingdom of God, it's not what we eat, it's not what we drink, it's not those, it's not these external things. What is it? The kingdom of God is what? Anybody? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness. So he, he, really, he really distills it down to three things. Righteousness, because everything starts when you truly believe in your heart that you're righteous, not with your own self-righteousness, but with the righteousness that Christ has, gave you, has given you. But then second... It's peace. Do you know what's missing in the world today? It's peace. Do you know what's missing in so many people's lives? It's not just peace among nations and peace amongst, amongst people groups and, and that kind of thing. I'm telling you that people right now, and probably some of you here tonight, right now are watching by live stream. Right now, you, your heart is in turmoil. You're not in peace. Things haven't been peaceful. It's internally, there's, there's no peace in you. And so you can look at situations and circumstances as, man, if this is right, then I'll have peace. If my wife wouldn't yell at me, then I'll have peace. Not that Jennifer yells at me. She's been redeemed from all of that. But but, but, you know, in a marriage situation, in a family situation, um, in, 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 in church situations, you can, you can look at different things and say, man, if this was just fixed, ah, then I would have peace. Wouldn't it have been amazing if Jesus, as he's going across the lake with his disciples and the storm rose up, and is literally beating into the boat, and it's probably getting ready to sink it. If Jesus had gotten up and said, "Ah, oh, man, if this storm wasn't here, I would have peace." But this is this is messing with me right now. Shandala <laughs> mana. No. Let me get him. Let me get in the zone. Let me get into a place of peace. No, 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 no. He he lived in that zone the whole time. Peace was just who he was. And so he was asleep. That's how much peace he was in. And then he gets up after they wake him up, and he just and he speaks what's on the inside of him to his situation and to his circumstances. How do we let the peace of God rule in our hearts? How do we let that make decisions for us in our life? It's the voice of God that's talking. Sometimes you'll you'll look at something like I've uh, I've seen people that have 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 gone into a, a job situation, 
and and the job, you know, so so you're looking for a job and you've got two job opportunities and 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 one of them looks like it's everything that you want. It's got it's got the benefits. It's got the history. It's got um, the, the, the possibility for promotion. It's everything that you want. And the other job is less money. It's, um, it's going to require extra effort, extra work, uh, uh, no benefits. And so on the surface, on the surface, the job with the greatest benefits and the greatest compensation package, it's what looks like that's, you know, man, this is it. And if you were ruled by your senses, if you were ruled by your soul, if you were ruled by what you see, you're making those decisions. And you're saying, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that because that looks like, I mean, that's the promised land. Let's do that. But something inside says it just doesn't feel right. There's just not a piece about it that, like, I don't think that's the the right course. But, but God, it looks great. God, look at, look at this. God, look at that. And I've watched people over and over, over the years, if they don't follow their peace. So I've watched it happen in both ways. I've watched those that, that's like they, they've taken what they've seen because there's immediate, hmm, thank you, Father, for that word. Yeah, but no, yes, but I was thanking God for the word he's given me to say right now. <laughs> there is immediate gratification, but the word that, um, uh, uh, the thought that the Lord has given to me is that never make a decision based on how it's going to impact you just today. Make sure that you, as you make decisions, that you're seeing that every decision you make is a seed for your future. And if you accept a job because there's an immediate, like you said, gratification, but there's immediate benefit to right now, it has the possibility to derail you off of your destiny that God has for you. And peace doesn't come from the better job that you get. Peace comes from being in the center of God's will for your life. I can tell you that from experience, you know, because in, in my life, and, you know, I had my, my own business. I still have the business, and we're doing family, and we're doing life, and we're doing all of that, but something wasn't right. There wasn't a fit with it. Something was missing, and, and so when God called me to pastor, um, I said, no, you know the story. I ran. I was like, that's not what I want to do. That's not my plan for my life. That's a, that's a bad idea. You don't want me to pastor anyway. And, and, but God wouldn't leave me alone. And so finally, Jennifer and I said yes to the call. You know, here's the thing. It's not about what you do for God. Listen to this. Because some, sometimes people are like, what am I supposed to do for God? How can, I, how can I show God that I love him? It's not what you do for God. The question is, are you doing what God has asked you to do? Did you hear that? Sometimes we can get caught up in doing things for God. But the question is, Sushil, are you doing what God has asked you to do? Are you, is that the decision that you've made? God, what, have you, what are you saying to me in this moment? When Jennifer and I said yes to God, and we followed that peace, and we followed what God was saying, we was like, I know this is God because there's peace all over it, but it doesn't make any sense. When we stepped into that, all of a sudden, our life got completely rearranged. Our relationship with God was, was unlike anything that we've ever knew that we could experience. We discovered the love of God. We experienced God at a level that we didn't know that we could. And then all of a sudden, we're right in the center of God's will. He changes our heart about pastoring. He changes our heart about church. He changes our heart about people. Aren't you glad? Say thank you. He changes our heart the whole way. And then all of a sudden, now there's just peace and there's just joy, and I can confirm that scripture that says the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And here's the thing, 
it's supposed to be that way all the time. You can experience that every single day. Every single day. And not have some good days and some bad days. It comes from peace. All right, how do you develop this real quick? John, I need you to come on up, please. Alan, you can go up and play, please, sir. I'm just directing things real quick. Turn with me over to Isaiah chapter 26. Thank you, Father. We're going to move into into some practical things here. Thank you, Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, God says this, you will keep him in what? Perfect peace. In perfect peace. Actually, um, the word for peace, does anybody know what the Hebrew word for peace is? Shalom. Shalom. It's, 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 it's a peace that, that means wholeness. That means that there's nothing missing and nothing broken and nothing lack, lacking. Okay, so here when it says you will keep him in perfect peace, literally that is you will keep him in shalom, shalom. Like double wholeness, double nothing. It's just, it's, that's just, that's the bubble that you live in. But it says, who, who's the person that stays in that place? How do you, how do you move into a place that, that you're living from this place of peace and that, that whatever's going on around you, that you're still in a place that you hear that stillness. So again, back to what Lauren said, the winds of the spirit adjusting. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Spirit of God's all over this right now. Receive this. As you are adjusting to what God is saying, as you're learning to hear his voice, the, 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 the goal, if you will, the goal for what God is telling you in your life, for you to hear the voice of God, is so that you can move into that place of perfect peace, of shalom, shalom, of his perfect wholeness and soundness for your heart and for your life. Because it's from that place when you've been refreshed by the Spirit of God, it's from that place that now you are wonderfully prepared, wonderfully equipped to now minister and to be a conduit for the gifts of the Spirit to flow through you into other people's lives. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. That as, as you rearrange your thinking, as you begin to focus on him in Philippians 4, 6, it says, don't be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. In other words, you're keeping your, your mind and your thoughts on him, what he said about you. And then it says this, and the peace of God, verse 7, the peace of God that passes all understanding, it will guard your mind, it will guard your heart, it will keep it in Christ Jesus. So where's your attention? What's going on in your mind? Where does your mind stay? And John, I just thought you might have some things to, to add to this. You've been on an amazing journey as well. And, and, and some, of the, some of what you've been through actually speaks to this as well. So would you share for, for just a moment they're going to move into some other Activate stuff? Well... Thank you, Pastor Mark, for the opportunity. That's such an important scripture. What you have your mind stayed upon. What you're tethered to. We become tethered, really even unknowingly, to things that are not necessarily centered on Christ and who he is. Because if we're not focused on him in that, we can't know who we are. So we're in disarray. We can't have peace if we don't see ourselves in Christ. 
And what does that mean? What does that mean to see yourself in Christ? You have to be able to see Christ for who he is, what he has done, and not look at yourself. Because we've died to self, the scripture says. So I think part of what Mark wants me to share over the last several weeks, six weeks, uh, most of you know I was actually absent from the church for about a month because I came down with COVID. And uh, it, was, it was a bad case. I mean, it was, it was rough. But just like with, and in fact, next week, by the way, and I've shared this healing testimony before, but next week I should have been dead seven years ago when I was healed of lymphoma and when I was healed of leukemia. That's next week was my death date seven years ago. So anyway, I end up getting COVID six weeks ago and I'm home. I'm in fever for nine days. So I revert back to what I know I need to do. It's interesting saying I'm reverting back because that meant I wasn't there and I should have been there all along. My mind and my thoughts were not necessarily focused on Christ like they should have been. And I became tethered to some other ideas and to some other thoughts and without even realizing it. So I'm listening to scripture day and night. I'm listening to sermons day and night. And I mean, day and night, they played 24 hours a day. I was in bed for two weeks, literally in bed for two weeks. So my mind is being renewed. I don't always get to hear everything that goes on here because now I'm so busy in the background Uh, and didn't realize, even though I'm in the Word every day and I'm listening to the Word every day, it wasn't as intense as what I went through six weeks ago. So as I'm listening, it's renewing my mind again. It's refreshing me. I'm becoming centered off of myself because I'm not needing to think about myself. I I was feeling horrible wasn't really thinking about anything other than him and what he did for me, which is where I should be camped out all the time. That's where you should be camped out all the time. And then that began to transform. You know, I can, you can be, I was saved when I was 23 years old. You can still be transformed at 53 years old, at 55 years old, at 75 years old. (laughs) Transformation. Christ is always being fully formed in us. None of us are there where he's completely fully formed in us in every area. Now he's done the work. It's all a finished work. But I kept my mind focused on him. And as I got, of course, I got healed. Praise God. He reached me through the word. He reached me through the preaching. He reached me through some just wonderful family here that I never had in a church before. Family that came to my aid, even though I wasn't asking them to. So that expression of love in the body was very visible and it was very tangible to me at that time. And it was beautiful and it touched me and it changed me and it began to also transform me as I listened to these words. But I kept my mind focused on him. Without even realizing it, the peace that I knew I didn't have and I didn't know why and I should have known why. It's elusive. You don't, you don't realize you're not focused on something when you should be. Sometimes just things are big, they get in the way, and the next thing you know, you're carried away with those thoughts, and you're not focused on the thing that matters most. When you were saying something up here about, you know, the, the jobs and not taking one job over another just because it looks good, never, never let what matters, seems to matter more in a moment, interfere with what matters most in eternity. Don't let that happen. And you won't if you stay focused on him. My peace returned. I had this inner smile that started coming out and people in the body started saying to me, there's something different about you. I'm seeing changes in you that are beautiful, that are wonderful. And I was so thankful for that. 
but that's a natural result of staying focused on him so that you know who you're not staying focused on a relationship with somebody else. If, if my identity is focused on anything other than Jesus, if it's a relationship, if it's a situation, then I'm only ever doing as good as that relationship or that situation is doing. You don't want that. Your identity should only ever be based on Christ because he's doing great all the time, all the time. So he's being fully formed in me each and every day. I'm being transformed because my mind is being renewed. And I encourage you, stay focused on him and check yourself. Am I letting a relationship define me? Am I letting a situation or a circumstance define me? Because if you're, and I I mean, check yourself. You got to do this daily, right? Because things could come up in an instant. You got to check yourself. Am I focused on him? Is my identity coming from him and him alone? And I promise you that shalom, shalom that he's talking about will just be a natural thing. You'll blossom in.